When I was doing the 5K plaque, I had no idea that my follow-up video would be a 10K plaque. I had said that I'd do one if I ever got there, so let's get started. For this plaque, I wanted to try something a little bit different than usual. I would normally model the thing that I wanted to make and then figure out how to produce it. In this case, I'm going to produce a 3D sign from a 2D image using a displacement map. In rendering, a displacement map is used to add depth and texture to a model. This is usually just used for making images, but I'll use it to produce a 3D model and machine it and then cast it in aluminum. This is just some 3D text I put in space. You can see that the front text is just a flat extrusion. First, I'll need to set up the rendering. I'll be rendering this fairly large. I'll do 6,000 pixels in the long direction, keeping the aspect ratio the same as the viewport window. I do not need to anti-alias this rendering, and that's partially why I'm rendering it so large. Next, I'll go ahead and render this. Here the rendering is done, but the image is not what I'm interested in. What I'll need for this project is the distance channel. Here you can see that the objects that are closer are shown in white, and the surfaces that are farther away are darker. I'm going to save this out as a PNG file. Next, I'm going to open the image I just generated in Photoshop. If I zoom in, you'll see that the depth channel is not anti-aliased even if this had been turned on. I will make a layer from the background layer and delete the black background. I will then blur this and add it to a composite. Let's look at the final image. Here is the final image. I started with a background and then darkened it a bit to push it back. I then put a gradient map over this so the texture will fade at the edges. I added the YouTube play button with a gradient over it and brought in the distance map. I added a layer over this to lighten the leg of the K in order to bring it out from the background. Next I'm going to take this image back into Rhino. I'm going to use Height Field from Bitmap. The high density foam I'm using is 8 inches wide. Here I'll make a high density mesh, 1 inch tall for now. Here we can see that it generated a mesh. I'll now scale it to 0.375 inches tall. Now let's take a look at the surface. You can see that there are some artifacts left over from the image, but it's a pretty decent start. When I wrote the toolpath, I chose a lower tolerance than usual to sort of even this out. You can see that since these bumps are less than 0 0.01 inches, RhinoCam ignores them. Now let's simulate it and see the result. Here you can see that it is reasonably smooth. I'm going to post this and I'll see you at the machine. To attach the foam to the spoil board, I'll use double sided duct tape. This is sure tape that I get from Lowe's and is the best I've found for doing this. This is 30 pound density polyurethane foam for model making and prototyping. The foam is very rigid and works great for CNC applications. 
This is an Amana 16th inch tapered ball end mill for 3D carving. I'll use this bit for all of the surfacing, as I'm not going to do any roughing, since this is foam and the step over is about five thousandths of an inch. The consistency of the foam is pretty good, but there are a few spots that I'll have to fill with some Bondo and sand flush. The 30 pound density foam and the Bondo are about the same hardness when it comes to sanding the piece. Next I'll coat the piece with clear gloss polyurethane. The reason I am not using epoxy is that I'd like to preserve as much detail as possible. The polyurethane is much thinner and completely soaks in to seal the surface. 